Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. And, um, you know, it's funny, I don't really talk about this kind of thing that often. Uh, you know, I don't even watch BT 106 in part that much. Um, you know, I've, I've been on the show, uh, I think, one time, something like that. And I have, uh, I went to the show also to take my daughter uh, a few years ago. And so I know the influence that the show has on the black community and on teenagers and, you know, and I know the... The, the vast influence that BET has as a network, even though um, you've heard me in the past say or express some of my concerns I've had about BET. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I was watching this thing um, today uh, where this uh, video is kind of circulating with this singer. I've never heard of him. I guess he's new on the block. His name's August Alsina, and he was on the show talking to the co-host uh, Keisha Clark, or Keisha Shante, excuse me, Keisha Shante, uh, who was on there with Bow Wow. And uh, during, I guess during the, the testy exchange, uh, she asked him a question about some beef he had with Trey Songs, you know, another one of those singers that my daughter used to love. And, um, and you know, he says, I told you I wasn't going to answer that shit. And then uh, she pushes the issue, and he speaks over her. He pretty much, uh, you know, disrespects her, blows her off. And I, and I believe he really hurt her feelings. I believe that she was angry. I believe she was hurt. I believe she felt embarrassed and humiliated. And uh, I saw Bow Wow, who's actually, you know, not not a, not a stupid guy, but he kind of covered it up and kind of moved the show on and all that. But but here's the thing. Here, here's what here's what concerned me about this. This is why I had to jump in and really talk about this real quick. Um, what I really saw when I watched this video was I saw a black woman being severely, severely disrespected. Um, you know, disrespected in a way that really shouldn't be acceptable to any of us, but it is. It's become, see, what people don't understand is that, you know, this hip-hop culture, the, the way it's kind of morphed itself uh, through uh, commercialization. I'm not, I'm not talking about real hip-hop. I'm talking about this bullshit on the radio. Uh, it's been it's morphed itself into something that is highly dysfunctional, highly disrespectful. Uh, if you watch shows like Love and Hip Hop or even Basketball Wives, you see semblances of these highly dysfunctional interactions between men and women. And so, as a result, uh, you know when you see this kind of inter interaction go down, and you see that the black man standing next to her uh, didn't even step up to defend or support her in any way. He didn't even say, "Well, hey, hey, hey," you know, no no profanity on the show. We trying to keep it, you know, we trying to keep it uh, positive here, you know. He didn't say anything like that. He just sort of said, yeah, man, yeah, man, well, I want to talk to you about your new video, da-da-da. And then he starts singing, and all the women start screaming as he's singing, and the poor girl behind him just kind of walks away because I, I think she felt humiliated. And, and, and the dynamic there really is one where you see a couple things going on. Number one, you see a young black man who feels that he can disrespect women uh, at any level he wants. Uh, number two, you see another black man who doesn't defend the woman, but he buddies up with the man who was just horribly abusive toward the black woman. And then three, you see <clears throat> uh, black women screaming in support of this man who just humiliated another black woman on stage. So the message being sent to that young man is, yo, I can disrespect these bitches all day long and they're still going to scream for my shit. That's what he's thinking. That's what's going through his mind. And I'm saying it like that because you know me, I just keep it honest. Uh, and so what I think that we have to really realize is that there's a lot more depth to that kind of interaction than what we might think. Uh, and I don't really blame uh, the, the the man so much. Uh, you know, he's young. He's 21. He, he probably wasn't taught any better. I do, but I do blame him. He does have some obvious accountability here. I don't blame the women entirely, but the women have some account accountability here too because what young women have to understand is that that you're teaching black men how to treat you every time you allow disrespect to occur and you don't respond to it. When you reward disrespect... What you're doing is you're sending an implicit message that's saying we love you even if you call us bitches and hoes and talk about us in ways that are worse than anybody would talk about a dog. You know, when Lil Wayne makes a song and he says, I'm going to steal your girlfriend, I'm going to turn her into my personal slut, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have her on the, on the, on the streets uh, sell, you know, selling ass for me, and then I'm going to murder her and send her dead body back to you. And then women cheer for that, women buy the record, women sing along with it, women dance to it, women say, I love Lil Wayne. Other men are observing this and they're saying, well, wait a minute. So you're telling me that if I disrespect women, they're going to like me that much more. So all of us play a role in this, and I really think that we have to really think about the dangers of these kinds of interactions occurring in our community, because a few years from now, these people are going to be trying to get married, and it's going to be a mess. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. Take care. Have a wonderful day. I'm gone.